We're still in lesson 3.2. We're going to talk about parallel lines and angle pairs and the three theorems I mentioned in the last video. We're at 3.2b. We have four previous videos for the chapter that are linked in the geometry playlist in the description. If a transversal is perpendicular to two parallel lines, all eight angles are congruent. They're all right angles. We have here a transversal, the red line, is perpendicular to the two parallel lines. They make eight right angles. I have another theorem for you. This is 3.2.2, .2, alternate interior angles theorem. And the theorem says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of alternate interior angles are congruent. So you can see the green angles 1 and 3, they're congruent, and the blue ones 2 and 4 are congruent. All right, I've got, an, I've got another one. This is the alternate exterior angles theorem. And you can see from the card here which are going to be considered interior or exterior, okay? So our theorem says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the two pairs of alternate exterior angles are congruent. If two parallel lines are cut by that red transversal, then the alternate exterior angles are congruent. So 5 is congruent to 7, and 6 is congruent to 8. I've got another one. This is the same side interior angles theorem. It says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the two pairs of same side interior angles are supplementary. So that means 1 and 4 are supplementary and will equal 180 degrees, and 2 and 3 are supplementary and will equal 180 degrees. All right? And keep in mind that these theorems only work if there are parallel lines cut by a transversal. So if our lines are not parallel, then these do not fit, okay? Here's alternate interior angles in a flowchart proof. We have given that line L is parallel to line M. We need to prove that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. We can see they're in the interior, 2 and 3, and they're on opposite sides of the transversal, aren't they? And you can also see our little marks here showing that they're parallel lines, okay? So here's our flowchart proof. We've got line L is uh, parallel to line M, that's given, and that brings us to angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, and that's the corresponding angles postulate. Then we've got angle 2 is congruent to angle 1 because of the vertical angles theorem. We know 1 and 2 are congruent to each other because they're on the other sides of each other, aren't they? We learned that way in the beginning. That's going to lead us to angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 because of the transitive property of congruence. 2 and 3 are alternate interior angles. When parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the angle pairs are, that are made are either congruent or supplementary. The angle pairs have the same measure or will have a sum of 180 degrees. We can find angle measures by using these theorems. Take a look at this drawing as I read this. The measure of angle EDF, that's what we need to find. So can you see EDF? It's EDF. We need to find where this X is. We need that measure. And we can see that this angle ABC is 125 degrees. And because of the alternate exterior angles theorem, if that's 125 degrees, then that's 125 degrees. It's on the other side of the transversal, and it's in the exterior, okay? How about the measure of angle TUS? Here's TUS, so it's where this 23x degrees is. And this is 13x degrees. We learned in the same side interior angles theorem that they're going to be supplementary when they're on the same side of the transversal and in the interior. And these are on the same side of the transversal in the interior. See? We can turn our little card this way. Okay, so that's the interior. So we have 13x degrees and 23x degrees. We can add them together and we know they're supposed to equal 180 degrees. We combine the like terms and we get 36x equals 180 degrees. 
divide both sides by the coefficient 36, and we get x is equal to 5 degrees. Now all we have to do is substitute that into the 23x. So instead of 23 times x, we have 23 times 5. So we know that the measure of angle TUS is 115 degrees. Got a couple more. Now look, we have three parallel lines cut by two red transversals, and the transversals are not parallel. So our parallel lines are the black ones, okay? And we can turn our little cards so you can see the interiors and exteriors, okay? If we look here, we're going to take one transversal at a time. So we ignore the bottom one, and we look at this is 125 degrees, and it's on the other side of the transversal of this one, so they're alternate. They're also exterior. So these are alternate exterior angles, and we've got this is 125 degrees, and this is 25x plus 5y degrees. So by the alternate exterior angles theorem, we know that that expression is equal to 125 degrees. Then we look at the second transversal. This is 120 degrees, and this is 25x plus 4y degrees. And by the corresponding angles postulate, they are equal to each other. They should be congruent. So now we've got this equation and this equation. We can subtract this second equation from the first one. If we take away 25x from 25x, that makes a zero pair, so that's gone. We've eliminated it. And if we have 5 minus 4, that leaves 1y is equal to 5. We take that y equals 5 and put it back into one of the equations and we get 25x plus 5 times 5 equals 125, which means 25x plus 25 is equal to 125. We can remove this 25 from both sides of the equal sign. We're left with 25x is equal to 100. We divide both sides by the 25 coefficient and we get 1x is equal to 4. So our ordered pair is 4 for x and 5 for y. 4 for x and 5 for y. All right. Here we've got some more parallel lines. We've got lines P and Q are parallel. We've got T is our red transversal. We've got eight angles. And we can split these into which are congruent and which are supplementary. Because remember, when parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the angle pairs that are made are either congruent or supplementary. So it's going to be either in this category or this category. So look at this drawing as I read these, OK? The corresponding angles are angles 1 and angles 5. It's also angle 2 and angle 6. Angle 3 and angle 7 are corresponding. And angles 4 and angles 8 are corresponding. Now keep looking at the diagram as I read these. The alternate interior angles are angles 4 and angles 5. They're in the interior and the other. They're alternate, they're on other sides of the transversal. And angles 3 and 6 are in the interior and on the other, on different sides of the transversal. Then we have alternate exterior. So they're going to be on opposite sides of the transversal, but in the exterior. So we have 1 and 8, and we have 2 and 7. All right? And then for our supplementary angles, we have same side interior. We have angle 3 and 5 are on the same side of the transversal in the interior, and angles 4 and 6 are same side interior. Okay. And we can find each angle measure and justify each answer with a postulate or a theorem. So look at this diagram. We can see the measure of angle 5 is 120 degrees. If that's 120 degrees, then that's 120 degrees because there's corresponding angles. We can use the corresponding angles postulate. And the measure of angle 2 would be 60 degrees because of the linear pair theorem. If that's 120 degrees, then that's got to be 60 so that they total 180, don't they? And the measure of angle 3 would have to be 60 degrees because of same side interior angles theorem. If that's 120, then that's got to be 60 because these two are supplementary inside. And the measure of angle 6 is 60 degrees. That's a linear pair theorem. Measure of angle 7 is 60 degrees. That's also a linear pair theorem. If 6 is 60 degrees, then 7 is also, isn't it? Because they're vertical angles also, aren't they? That could be another reason. And 
The measure of angle 8 is 120 because of the vertical angles theorem. See? So these angles are either congruent or supplementary. So look at all the 120s and 60s. See? They're either congruent and will equal 60 degrees or they're supplementary and will total 180. All right? Our next lesson is going to be lesson 3.3. We're going to talk about proving lines parallel. And 3.3a is the converse of corresponding angles postulate. I hope you're taking good notes because that's really going to help you. There's going to be a lot more proofs in this course. And it's good to have them at your fingertips. And I hope you're making drawings and marking the diagrams with what these different angles are, which are alternate interior, which are alternate exterior. And try to keep that little drawing of the exterior and interior etched in your mind, okay? I'll see you next time. I hope you have a good day. Bye.